Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a new looker from Urban EDC and JRP Knives, the Kaiser Begleiter XL joins the collection and 10 great folders for first timers. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. It's good to have you back on the Midweek Supplemental. My favorite comment from this past week was from our good friend JC from the Knives Fast channel. And of course, Tempest Knives, by the way, the pinion is fully funded, so mine will be on the way at some point. He says, uh, this was on last week's uh, Dan Eastland of Dogwood Knives uh, interview. He said, well, after watching this, I wish I had gone by Dan's table at Blade Show. Seems like a fascinating and really cool guy. This is one of my favorite podcasts you've done. Love the perspective that he comes at uh, his knives with. Thanks for the content, Bob, says Casey. A couple of things here. First of all, he says, I love the perspective. And by the way, Dan Eastland is also host of our uh, co-host of Knife Perspective podcast. So kind of interesting choice of words Casey used there. But I also love uh, this comment reflects uh, kind of the main mission of this show. I as as um, as I discover makers and people that I really like and think you all would like, I it's my pleasure to expose you to uh, different people and to and to uh, learn about them as I'm learning about them. So uh, mission accomplished there. So I, I really appreciate the comment, Casey, and I appreciate all of your comments. OK, so let's do a pocket check uh, for this week and for the day. Uh, today, I'm still on my uh, automatic knives high. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's still uh, fresh fresh it still feels fresh that i can carry this around i still have a bunch of other automatics i'd like to get but uh the inaugural legal automatic in my collection the hair uh the heretic manticore xl and as i have this one when i first got this i was a little put off by the rattle but in uh carrying the rest of my automatics uh most out the fronts have it i i do not have a, a g and g hawk uh so all of my out the fronts have rattle and I've, I've gotten used to it. Uh, it is somewhat, uh, you know, somewhat loud because this is a somewhat large knife, but uh, it, you know, I've, I've gotten over that because really I'm not doing too much knife fighting with this. And if I were the sound it, it was making as I wing this through the air uh, would be the last of my concerns. So I really got this for the blade. I am a sucker for a recurve. And this reminds me a little bit of a Walter Brend fixed blade. And uh, well, until I can afford a Walter Brand fixed blade, this will have to do. Uh, but I love the actuation. It feels it feels really good. It comes out easy. Uh, I know that that slider is on ball bearings. They do something a little bit different, I think, than uh, than Father Company Microtech. Not that it's actually the Father Company, but uh, Anthony Marfioni Jr. I believe started Heretic, uh, and his, with I think with his father's. You know what? There was a bit of friction there, but I think now they're all good. I don't know. I don't know. There's a bit of knife drama there, and uh, uh, it's, it's hard to get to. Uh, I would like to have um, the Marfionis on the show, but it's hard to get to them. Anyway, so that's the Manticore X. It's been a pleasure to carry. By the way, uh, it's got a great glass breaker because it is there. It is present in the form of a little ball, ball bearing of some sort. I'm not sure what material it is, but you can cap it with your thumb really easily. It feels fine. It does not hurt or poke at all. So very nice uh, setup there with the glass breaker. Okay, next up, uh, today's carry. Uh, I had my 71 uh, Sod Buster from Great Eastern Cutlery. And this is a knife I have not carried in quite a while, uh, but with the announcement of the new GEC Sud Buster, yes, that's right. It's a it's a two layer Sod Buster with a cap lifter in there, and um, I'd love to have it, but you know what? I'm I'm not really into collecting GECs that much anymore. I mean, not that I've stopped officially, but you know, I just miss drops, and I'm not uh, I'm not sitting there hitting refresh and. And I have been out of the slip joint phase for a long time. Actually, Ben and Ben Belkin and Jack Wolf Knives have has brought me headlong back into slip joints. And this is one of my favorites. It's so light. And uh, I, I, I don't think I would like the Sud Buster as much. This is already a chunky knife. This is like uh, 
this is more than a half inch thick. This is already a chunky knife. Feels very good in hand. It's light because of the micarta, but another layer and another spring in there. I just feel like, you know, for my practical purposes, uh, it would be a little bit too much. But have the uh, the little leather fob on there, meaning it's mine forever. And of course, a nice patina on there. Uh, I come in and out of patinas on my GECs. Uh, I will I'll put them on. Usually through, uh, I'll, I'll use them at meal time. I love cutting meat with them because meat gives them great patinas. And then eventually uh, I'll, I'll get sick of it and I'll polish it off. Uh, lastly today for emotional support, I had the Concept Preta, uh, not Preta 2, the Concept uh, Pelican by K. Max Rom, French designer, uh, who many of his knives had that signature thumb swale with the double peaks on the spine. That is what drew me into his custom knives on Instagram uh, years back. And then he started uh, he started doing these licensed designs with uh, first with Kaiser and uh, then with Concept. Love his designs. And man, I am such a huge fan of Concept knives, got to say. And I've been loving Kaiser uh, the past year also. But for me, really, I've been getting the biggest kick out of the Vanguard series. I like the sort of less premium, less well, like not titanium, the the more um, micarta stuff. You know what I'm saying? The micarta and N690 or 14C uh, kind of uh, kind of uh, Kaisers. Great action, great designs, light, you know, great for fidget, great for cut, cutting, <laughs> cut, great for cut. A uh, little caveman there came out. Um, just awesome knives. I, I, I've I had a whole bunch of Kaisers and from their premium line when they sort of first came out with the great the Matt Cucciara the the big Matt Cucciara titanium knives. Man, I wish I didn't get rid of those big hollow ground recurve. I can't remember what it was called, the big dog or something. Big hollow ground recurve Bowie blade, uh, uh, over four inches on bearings, contoured titanium. Beautiful stuff. I got rid of all of that uh, in pursuit of other knives and have been slowly getting back into Kaiser with uh, their recent offerings. You'll see more of it today. So that's what I was carrying. Uh, in backwards order, uh, the emotional support knife of the day was the Concept Pelican, awesome little knife. This also comes in a uh, uh, sheep's foot, stylized of course. Uh, had the GEC 71, look for the Sud Buster coming to a knife purveyor near you, and uh, the Manticore. Uh, and by the way, I like this uh, bent clip. It's a lot less, committal than some of the others the the others are very sculptural and uh with ball bearings and all that and um, that's not my thing uh, i like just a simple bent clip most of the time okay so coming up on the knife junkie podcast we're, we're going to take a look at a new knife from urban edc they always have really cool collaboration knives i have yet to get one but i i need to uh i need to figure that out uh we'll take a look at the last uh civivi of july uh we've seen a few um reviews on this now uh and then we'll take a look at uh, this my state of the collection. And then, of course, uh, 10 best knives that you can get as a gift to a 100 percent newbie coming up right here. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals. Be sure to visit the knife slash knives through our special affiliate relationships. We bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives, help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Urban EDC, known for their awesome collaboration knives with custom makers uh, and designers, have a new one out with Jared Price of JRP Knives. I've been following him for a long time on Instagram. I like JRP Knives. And uh, this um, this new one called the, the Micro, is it Micro or Mini Shrike? I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta look up my, yeah, the Micro Shrike. It's not so micro, it's just sub three inches in blade length. But uh, this this new one out, man, is it beautiful. Thank, uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that it's uh, a, you know, below my wheelhouse size because this, so, uh, that 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 style uh, clip point blade with that beautiful swedge and it's hollow ground. I find it really beautiful. And if it were a full size knife, 
uh, this this coming in at 2.86, I believe. If it were full size, I, I would be so tempted. And the Urban EDC knives are exclusive. They don't make many of them. Uh, they're high end and they're with designers. So they're not inexpensive. Uh, and I would, I would, I would be moved to buy this. I find that blade shape so compelling. I, it reminds me a bit of. I'm going back here. The Combative Edge uh, SR1. Is it SR1? No, no. no. Um, that first Combative uh, Edge knife. I have it in my. I should have pulled it out. Uh, minus the recurve. That whole setup with the with the short clip and the long swedge. Uh, very reminiscent of that knife. Um, but a beautiful handle looks quite neutral, uh, comes in th uh, two flavors of micarta, and then of course contoured titanium, and uh, coming soon, go check out uh, Urban EDC Supply, very, very cool knife, man. And while you're there also, check out the Nessie, that's another cool one, reminds me a bit of a knife we're gonna take a look at in a minute in the state of the collection. Uh, you'll know which one I'm talking about when we get to it. Okay, next up, uh, the Citos from Civivi is now out, and it was the last, um, uh, a release of July, and uh, we got a chance to take a look at it through a number of different uh, reviews online. And uh, uh, reviews are a little mixed, and and I'm not surprised. And the reason is, I think that steel lock bar. Some people have trouble getting around the fact that it's got it's a steel frame lock, but uh, I I think we have to get this one to check out here. I've had a number of steel lock bars uh, come through here. I had the Boker uh, Lateralis, another. Man, every knife I, I bring up that I've traded or sold, I regret. Uh, but another knife I wish I still had. Uh, very light uh, and very smooth frame lock flipper of titanium from Boker. Uh, not titanium, I'm sorry, of steel. And it was so um, nicely milled and hollowed out, it felt like titanium. So I, I want to see how this how this CTOS does. But I just, uh, I wanted to re-mention this. We brought this up last week. And I just wanted to mention that now that it's out, there are a number of... Uh, of reviews out there people have snatched it up i think that the general consensus is people love the look of it and people like the blade but it's close enough to a number of other other knives and uh and that's a good excuse not to go for the steel lock bar i, I that's just the feeling i get um but we shall see i think this uh this demands this demands investigation from the knife junkie podcast so i think we'll we'll be getting this one in to take a look. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast. Let's take a look at three new knives in my collection and 10 folders. Uh, great as gifts for first time knife owners. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So I was talking about uh, my concept Pelican before and how much I like the brand and how I've noticed. Uh, my little sub collection has begun to swell. And by that, I mean, I think I have now five concepts and, uh, you know, we'll see. Maybe that means uh, I'm going all in. I just I really like the builds of them. I love the designs and they are addictive in their action and uh, and usage. Uh, great blade geometry on these. Also, I'm finding they're very useful aside from just being, uh, you know, very appealing and compelling. OK, so here we have. Um, Natural Tan Canvas Micarta. This is the Bulldozer. And this is the Bulldozer D2 version. So there, this is the high value version. And then there is a Titanium version. Um, titanium is a frame lock with contoured uh, handle scales. And you can get it in a number of different very high end uh, versions. But this D2 version is all I need. I, I had seen this uh, on a number of different channels and saw this on Blade HQ in a number of places lurking around. And... I just I, I I just felt like I had to get this. It reminds me a little bit of a Dow blade and it's got that long neutral handle. It it it, it took me a little bit to the place where the uh, Sen cut Bronte takes me and I, I just had to have it. Also, front flipper. Uh, I am getting more and more into front flippers and I feel like either. I, I think two things can be true at once. I think I'm getting uh, more comfortable actuating a, a, a wide range of different types in different ways. Like I'm getting better at this four finger style, but definitely not with my left hand. Um, so not only am I getting better at, at using them and more comfortable with uh, with a wide range of uh, of designs of front flipper, but I feel like manufacturers and designers are getting a better hang of it. So that's a great thing to be happening all at once. Uh, this D2 blade is fully flat ground. That's about an inch 
and an eight, inch and a quarter maybe at the at the widest inch and a and three thirty seconds <laughs> at the widest and fully flat ground it comes to a thin edge it's very this is a great work knife uh you say yeah but i, I don't see any uh, marks on it i have i have actually uh not cut anything but paper with this uh so that is the that is the caveat now that being said, this and two other knives in the state of the collection, which you'll be seeing in a minute, are going to be running the paces uh, by weekend because <clears throat> we're having two bathrooms redone and we had to get some medicine cabinets and some uh, some ancillary stuff from Ikea. Yes, it, yes. Uh, I, every time I mention it, uh, uh, I, I hear from uh, Jim. He's like, do you guys go there like every weekend. And no, it, it seems like we do because I think I complain about it a lot or mention it a lot because so much cardboard comes from that place. And what a great opportunity to test out new knives. So this one is going to go, uh, this one is going to be tested on a bunch of cardboard this coming weekend. And I think it's going to do great. I think that handle is uh, so nicely neutral and my cart, the micarta is very, very uh, comfortable. I just feel like this thing is going to go all day long through cardboard, and that this blade is going to do really nicely. Um, and I've I've seen test footage on other people's videos, and uh, if there's no camera trickery involved, I have no doubt this is going to be awesome. Uh, so I look forward to using this one. And uh, the patina on the micarta is already is already starting to happen. You can see that around the clip, and I. I like it. What can I say? I just, I love my card. I'm a my card a nerd. Speaking of my card a nerd, next up is also in my card. And this is the new uh, White Mountain Knives exclusive Big Lighter XL with the red my card. Okay, so they came out with the first run of these uh, at the beginning of the year. And they were in canvas, uh, tan canvas my card, very similar to this. And they sold like hotcakes. And, uh, I, I sat on it and uh, but I got a loaner from Dave and really liked it and then wanted to buy one and they were all gone. So waited around knowing they'd come back because people just went bonkers for these. And I saw that they had them in red linen micarta. I love linen micarta because of that. Uh, the fine fibers and the tight weave uh, feels really good in hand. Um, but they also came out with the, the canvas tan and then white, I think and black G10. A couple of different models of this, uh, but that's a four inch blade that's, uh, what is this, 14? I'm sorry, 154 CM. I couldn't remember what the blade steel was. Uh, 14, C I mean, <laughs> 154 CM, beautiful blade shape. I love that, almost a spear point. Just a beautiful blade shape with that swedge. Actually, when I looked at it uh, initially, I thought, oh, that's rather vanilla, uh, but it looks useful. Now that I, I have it, and it, it's a very beautiful blade. I think it's just a beautiful and simple shape. And I think they did it just perfectly. It's got all the right um, proportions visually. But cutting, this thing is wicked. And I love 154. I know I talk about it uh, a lot. It's a it's a simple man steel. It's a working man steel. I don't need much, you know what I mean, to cut that uh, thread off my collar. Uh, <laughs> but... I love 154 and it sharpens easily and it makes me feel like a good sharpener. Um, and that's, that's good for my, my ego. So I, I go with that. Uh, but this button lock is super smooth. There's a little bit of uh, button lock stick, which uh, is also present on my cogent from Civivi. These are my only two button locks at the moment uh, besides automatics, which I'm not counting here. Um, just great addictive action. It's on um, bearings. Nice size. I, I love this. This is a really good big knife. If you are a uh, folder guy or, or gal and you have smaller knives and you want a larger, you know, a knife in the four inch range like this, um, I, I think this is a really good one. It's it's nicely lightened. If you look at those steel liners, it's nicely lightened, but it has a nice heft to it. It's not heavy, but it feels very solid but it's also got that really nice action because the length of the blade uh, adds a little bit of weight and that weight adds, you know, momentum. I'm not a physicist, uh, but, but uh, it, it, it does give a better action to that knife. And uh, I highly recommend it. Go to White Mountain Knives and check it out. Um, yeah, 
do it now. Do it today. Oh, actually, uh, we have a White Mountain Knives uh, <laughs> uh, discount code. Sorry, Jim, I should have mentioned that. Uh, it, and it's Junkie. So just use Junkie and you get 10% off. Uh, I, I have forgotten about that. And frankly, I got to push that. I got to start getting more stuff from White Mountain Knives. They have such a great selection and it's a cool little operation. And why am I not pushing it? I'm saying it out here publicly. That means I got to do it. All right. Uh, next up in the state of the collection, this one was sent to me by the company and I'm glad they did. They've sent me two other knives in the past and I absolutely love them. Uh, one of them was the Bellamy, uh, the folder with M390 and, um, carbon fiber for a mere like 135 or something like that. A great, great folder. One of, one of the best I've gotten this year. And then, um, they also sent me the Morgan eight inch chef's knife. Uh, which is my wife's favorite knife now and probably my that's my go-to now too um it's so much thinner than my uh trident for instance which is a, a great knife but um yeah anyway so this one is the nightshade and this is their new version of it they first came out with the nightshade in uh it had like brass bolsters and micarta and uh, i think m390 blade steel this is 154 cm and contour g10 and i think this is made by kaiser i think i think i think pretty sure uh in my research i have come down to the fact that this is made by kaiser and it feels like a um what do you call it a vanguard line knife uh so you can quote me on that and then if i'm wrong i'll do a, ret a retraction uh, i love this knife i i thought when i first saw it on uh on youtube i thought wow man that's that's bold you know that's a that's that's an interesting design choice i wonder how that's going to go over i love it i love a downward angled blade like that and i love that barong shaped blade this to me is like a barong uh the barong is this sword hanging on the wall right here it's a big uh fat leaf shaped blade looks just kind of like this um and and though barongs usually have uh, a straight angle off of the handle um the curvature of the blade gives it that recurve, that sort of downward kukri feel. A and B, most Filipino style knives and swords, of, of which there are many, 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 have that downward angle. It just accelerates the cut. And it also means that on a thrust, you don't have to cant your wrist uh, as far down to get the point where you want it to be. Sort of like a pistol grip. Uh, so anyway, that's what this is. This is not meant to be a self-defense knife. This is meant to be an EDC. And it's an awesome edc knife but i i also uh i i uh i submit this would make an outstanding uh self-defense knife because you've got you've got an accelerated slash without anything look at the angle down it's like a little kukri but the point is right where you, you can you can flip your hand and any way you flip your hand your point is going right down the center uh because of the angle of your wrist your your wrist does not your hand does not come straight off your forearm. There's an angle there because you have a wrist and a, and a hand and all that. Anyway, I think you get the point. And, and all of that, of course, I'm approaching it from that, uh, wow, it looks like a great weapon uh, thing just because that's where my imagination goes. But in terms of, I was talking about the boxes, you can see I've already put this to use. This glides through material, not only because of that downward angle and that extreme belly and that super thin cutting geometry, because this is a thin blade steel and a wide, fully flat ground blade, but because of the uh, the 154 cm just keeps going and going. I uh, yeah, I did quite a few. I uh, did all the boxes yesterday in this, uh, and by all the boxes, I mean the Gott Morgan. We got two Gott Morgans. That that's a uh, that's a medicine cabinet, and then we got some mirror called the. I don't even remember something Swedish. Uh, and this this took care of all of those opening them and and sectioning them. And then the test will be with this and the bulldozer just cutting them down so I can get them in the recycling. Um, I thank you, Vastid uh, and Corinne. She's awesome. Um, she got in touch with me to see if I wanted to check this out. I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, right up my alley. And. Uh, oh, crowned spine. Great jimping. Uh, cool kind of proprietary pivot looks a little different outstanding action um, something that uh, Neve points out a lot is uh, how early the detent ball is when you're closing it and this is a very early 
a detent ball, meaning you don't have to, it doesn't have to come all the way down to where it meets the detent ball and then pop over the ball to close. It's, it's happening really early by the time, you know, if you just drop it onto your thumb, it's already dropping in there. You got a deep carry pocket clip with recessed screws. That should be the standard. Now. I think everyone's working towards that. I think everyone's kind of well, selling through their old stock and we'll be, we'll be doing that in the future. I think it's just cause everyone's complaining about it when it's, when the screws aren't recessed, look at that angle. What a great, what a great knife this is. I, I do dig this. And, uh, I, I showed it to both my wife and my older daughter, Eden, and they both hated it. <laughs> uh, Eden, actually, neither of them liked the blade shape, and they both took exception to the, the angle. And I said, girls, you don't know what you're talking about, girls. This is, uh, that angle's on purpose, girls. And, and uh, that leaf-shaped blade, it's, uh, it's badass, girls. And they, they still didn't go for it, so... Uh, it's all mine. I don't have to worry about them taking it. And a couple of here that we're going to look at uh, have been uh, summarily stolen from me uh, by my wife because they're they're small, charming and cute. And and I want them back. But I have them back right now just for the purpose here. So we're going to get to that right now. Hey, you ever you ever look for a knife for someone like uh, not too long ago? I, I started managing one person at work and got that person a knife. Uh, because there was an occasion when we were on a shoot and he didn't have a knife and he needed one. And then he didn't know how to close it, which I was like, come on, man. It's, it's just look at it. Look at it. But anyway, um, so I got him a Swiss Army knife. But I posited the question to the uh, Thursday Night Knives crew, uh, what should I get for this person? I heard a lot of different things. And uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about uh, one, one of the uh, one of the most... Um, popular things that someone said was in this list. So we're going to get to that in a quick second. So let's let's take a look, shall we? Visit the Knife Junkie at theknifejunkie.com to catch all of our podcast episodes, videos, photos and more. All right. Well, the first of the 10 best folders to buy a first-time knife owner uh, might be a surprise. I don't talk about this knife much on this show, but it's the classic and venerable Buck 110. I also have the 112 here. Uh, for size, if, if the person likes something smaller. Uh, but this is the knife you get for that person that you think might equate weight and solidity for quality. I don't know if you've ever uh, handed a heavy knife to a to a noob or someone who's, I shouldn't use that term. I am not in my 20s. Uh, you ever hand a knife to someone who doesn't know much about knives and they're like, oh, heavy, hmm, you know, oh, that's that feels solid. That feels That feels like a good knife. This knife would take care of that person because it is a good knife, but also it is a boat anchor. Uh, that's why it comes with great leather sheath. So does the 112 uh, Ranger. It comes with a great leather pocket uh, uh, pouch that you can put on your belt. Um, so these are great knives for people um, who live that, <laughs> who live a lifestyle that they can walk around with a, with a knife pouch. Um, now, I, I say that because I live in uh, suburbia right outside of, you know, D.C., and you don't see too many people walking around with knife pouches. But as soon as you leave the coast or you go, you know, anywhere outside of areas like this, you see a lot of that. You see Leatherman's on, on belts and you see Buck 110s, maybe maybe less than you used to. But um, this is great for that. Uh, it's a classic. It's very sharp, hollow ground for uh, 420 stainless steel. But it's with that heat treat that they do uh, the, uh, really well. So their 420 is like, you know, it, it's a great steel and it has serviced people for years and years and years. Um, but if that's not your bag, uh, just know that uh, buck, a buck 110 can be had in many, 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 many flavors. This is just the, the bottom floor, the, the, the ground floor of buck 110 and buck 112. And uh, when I got this, this was 40 bucks at Walmart. This is now 60 bucks, just looking it up and doing some research. And uh, the 112, which is a shorter version of the same knife. And uh, man, this is a very comfortable knife. I have a little quick, quick stud on there. Very comfortable knife, very heavy. These things are, are definitely uh, anchors, but, but great for that person who might equate weight with quality. Also, who doesn't love a beautiful, sharp, hollow ground blade? So uh, that is a good one. Okay, next one is an actual first knife for an actual first-time locking folder 
owner, my daughter, and this is what I got her. Uh, the Gonzo Firebird. Uh, this is the FH11 for 22 bucks. FH11, that's D2 blade steel. That's actual... Actually, I think that's carbon fiber ply on G10. But for 22 bucks, who does care? Uh, very nice cutting blade. Um, great jimping. Great flipping action. This is really good for... I mean, uh, Eden has been playing with knives for a while. She's pretty comfortable with it. And this is a good one for her. It's a, I actually gave it to her. I felt like maybe it was a little large. I could have gotten maybe something a little smaller, but she's gotten good with uh, flipping this. But but the, the thing I like about this is it's a, you get all of the luxury of a high-end knife with the, with the caged bearings and the, and the awesome action and the carbon fiber, at least in look and the nice uh, satin blade and the whole experience, the loop over pocket clip, but you get it for 22 bucks. It's very, very low commitment. And if you're getting the knife for someone you're not sure if they're going to carry or use, uh, but you want to get them something that looks nice and is, you know, pretty a nice build. These Firebirds are good. These these Gonzo Firebirds are good. Now, I don't think Gonzo anymore. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I shouldn't I shouldn't speak on this, but I, I do take exception to companies like Effingrau, who who just blatantly rip off, uh, do, you know, blatant rip offs of other knives. They don't put the other knives branding on it. They're not clones, I guess, technically, but you know, they look exactly like the microtech they're supposed to, they're copying or whatever. I don't like those companies. I know Gonzo used to do that a bit. I don't know if they do anymore, uh, but Firebird seems to be their own independent line and, uh, yeah, good, good stuff coming out of there. Uh, if, you know, if, if, if it's ethical for you. <laughs> All right. So that's uh, Gonzo and Firebird. Next up, I have two options. Uh, they're both great and interesting and they're, and they're both from high-end designers, but they're very inexpensive and they're from CRKT. That's a great thing about CRKT. You're going to get uh, inexpensive versions of high-end designer knives. And this one is the uh, CEO from Richard Rogers. I'm going in reverse order. CEO from Richard Rogers, uh, he's been on the show before, great guy, and make designing some really amazing uh, knives that people, uh, you know, much in demand. And uh, this is the CEO, and as you can see, it is nice and thin and set up to be like, to look somewhat like a pen in the pocket. So this is uh, meant to be carried or, you know, can be carried on the inside pocket of your of your blazer or even in your breast pocket of your shirt if you're if you're up for that i don't really like uh, too many things in my pockets i don't like feeling my shirt sag down so uh, but the inside pocket of a blazer would be perfect in slack pants it's very thin and very light in slacks pants it'd be excellent great action you can even reverse flick it uh, that that blade on this version is um uh eight cr but this also can be had in D2 and other steels. It's uh, three and a quarter. And then this is GRN. Again, you can get this as, exclu as exclusives from some purveyors with, I've seen it with brass uh, on the end there. And by the way, that reminds me of a doctor's knife a little bit. But brass on the end with micarta. Um, so really nice knife. You can get this for someone who uh, works in an office and and might like knives, but it's it's very unthreatening, and it has a unique look. This is not the kind of knife that most people have seen before. So slender, but long, and uh, kind of like a fruit knife, too. All right, so we're going to leave, or not a fruit knife, uh, a melon tester. That's what I was getting at, melon tester. We'll leave that there for the CRKTs. Other, kind of in the opposite direction, a little bit more of a bulbous design, is that beautiful uh, look from... Jesper Voxnez. This is the Pete, also in GRN uh, handle scales, also very inexpensive, $33 for this. You get the beautiful Vox styling, a very purposeful and um, well done drop point, uh, nearly fully flat ground 8CR13 MOV blade. And no, it's uh, not a premium blade steel, but it is 100% adequate, especially for a noob. I'm going to stop saying that, especially for for a new knife owner and someone who's just starting to carry pocket knives. This is great. It's got a classy design, 
very low, uh, very low commitment. If you lose this, it's 33 bucks. And of course, no one likes to lose even a $33 knife, but if you lose it, it's not the absolute end of the world. Got a nice uh, anodized blue um, backspacer there. This was a gift to me from uh, Christine of Women Carry Knives. I commented on her video about how I thought this was such a charming little knife, and she sent it to me. I thought that was very nice. Thank you, Christine. Deep carry pocket clip, recessed screws, the whole nine yards. Sort of the uh, opposite, spiritual opposite of the CEO, but both would be totally acceptable in pretty much any uh, work or social situation. So great for a new first time owner. Okay, this next knife is the knife that I would say was the overwhelming uh, crowd choice when I when I um, placed this question to the Thursday Night Knives crowd. Said, I'm working with a new guy. I want to get him a knife. What should I get? I did end up getting him a super tinker uh, from Swiss Army, uh, from Victorinox. I just thought it was more his speed. Uh, but I got this more than anything else. The QSP Penguin. Another knife now that is very, very, very popular and comes in a million different colors or different different flavors, I should say. This one is in that really cool denim micarta, uh, but it comes in other micartas and G10s. And this is in D2 blade steel, comes in other steels. You can get it premium versions right now from traditionalpocketknives.com. They did those really cool jigged titanium frame locks with m390 i mean people are just going nuts with this knife um you can see a little bit of patina around the knife clip around the clip you can see the patina is growing on this this one's getting a lot of use this one was the knife uh my wife was using during the um ikea builds and she loved it i said you know afterward i she asked for a knife because uh well we're having our bathrooms redone and all of her knives are under a tarp on her dresser, blah, blah, blah. So I just gave her this. I, and I gave her this on purpose. I wanted to see what she thought of it. She loved it. She didn't say anything about it. But I said later, what did you think of the of the knife? Use? Oh, I loved it. It's perfect for her hand. She's petite, perfect for her hand. And that Warncliffe blade or that sheep's foot blade just, just made quick work of, of the big fat cardboard boxes uh, she was opening. So very, very... Uh, cool i love this thing it is definitely grown on me when i got it it was uh kind of gritty and stiff uh but it's it's become nearly drop shut and i love washer action i love washer knives i think uh i think maybe we've gone a little too crazy with the ball bearings maybe we've spoiled ourselves a little bit maybe we should go back to a little bit more of this smooth washer action this is like smooth like Frank Sinatra smooth. The washer is Frank Sinatra smooth, and 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 ball bearings are like um, Timothy Chalamet smooth. I, I know they're they're different genres and everything, but I'm just thinking of uh, uh, guys that my daughters crush on, and he's so pretty, you know. And that's kind of like uh, that's kind of like the the ball bearing action. It's so pretty. It's so so lovely and cultivated. But to me, uh, sometimes. Sometimes I go for this kind of this kind of action. So what'll it be? Uh, anyway, QSP Penguin, awesome knife. I would definitely, uh, if you're going to get a locking folder for someone and they're first time owners, this is a great way to go. Because I got to say, for, for, a new, for someone who doesn't think about knives or consider them much, that is not a very scary or aggressive looking blade shape, as opposed to something like this you know which is sort of aggressive not that you would get this as a first time knife for anyone but it's very unthreatening it looks like a utility knife so qsp penguin awesome awesome knife now spiritual cousin i would say uh just in the feel anyway is the rat 2 love the rat 2 i chose the rat 2 over the rat 1 because it's the smaller version of course you can go up for the rat 1 uh 31 bucks it's still uh, uh for the rat 1 which is what 3.75 or 3.6 inch blade uh, i believe it's like 37 so you're not going that much further so the person uh, has bigger hands or likes a bigger knife go for that but i love the charm and uh the the action of my rat too my rat one has been in my car survival bag for so long i've kind of forgotten i have it um and that thing has good action too but this is such and i love this 
this one in particular was a gift from my daughter uh before my second daughter was born this is a this is an old one and uh i affectionately call it pinky tuscadero this was a back pocket knife for me for a long time um pinky tuscadero fonzie's girlfriend always had a black skirt with a pink what was it a pink skirt with a black poodle on it um i've never liked pink and then i i had daughters and i started to you know like pink uh especially with a black blade so there you go the rat 2 amazing washer action on this and no it does not drop shut it feels like a sabenza it's glass on glass oiled glass on glass smooth um from just years of opening and shutting and then it's got just great flicking out action all right next up one of those knives that my wife uh sort of just assimilated into her life and it sort of uh, uh you know kind of disappeared from mine um is the kershaw leak i love this thing and when i got it it, it was a 40 dollar knife at uh walmart uh this is 14 c 28 n and that just gorgeous Warncliffe. I love this. This is another knife I forget about. I forget about how awesome the leak is. Um, and you could use this, uh, the leak. I think this is probably the most sellingest. That's not how you say it. This is the most popular knife uh, sold the most by Kershaw, I believe, uh, is this leak or the leak. And it's got many different versions, many different uh, takes. This is just the standard um they they have the speed safe which on this knife i i don't mind of course i'd love bearings better but speed safe uh will do and this is one of the few knives ever where i will opt for tip down even though i have the tip up option because so much of this hangs out of the pocket uh look at look at so when you when you look at the blade here let me close this when you look at the pocket clip on this one whoops sorry you put the put the blade in the pocket and you can see how high up high up it rides well you switch it around and it's already mounted here so you've got this much hanging out of the pocket you have an inch full inch so i think most people unless they get an aftermarket clip for this most people opt for the tip down on this knife but this is just a classic that 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 14 c blade is very thin and it's hollow ground and it's just i'm shocked that i never broke the tip on this i used to carry this quite a bit uh and then it's got this secondary lock to keep it from opening because this would be a nasty one to have open in your pocket uh, right next to the here and then you just yeah close that up there and if you press on it, it stops it from uh from coming out so just a really really cool and classic knife from kershaw and would make an excellent first time knife and the fact that it's all metal it's aluminum and steel uh would make it seem also for that that crowd that likes the solid feel uh and yet it's way smaller and lighter than the buck 110 so great choice this one uh, rides in my wife's purse quite a bit <clears throat> next up uh, i'll show you two of them because they come in at the same price but uh, you know depending on if this person is a large or a small knife uh person you think okay so first is the civivi elementum probably one of the most highly recommended first knives out there uh, the elementum comes in a million different uh, uh colorways and materials you can get it in 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 a brass handle this is a ebony wood handle you can get it in all sorts of g10s and micartas uh it comes in different sizes now it's even uh it's it's got two exclusive button lock versions uh that don't have detents so you need the button to open and and to open and close it and um it just comes in a million flavors this is this is civivi's uh burnley boker or boker burnley quaken um super thin hollow grind just a great cutting knife this is my wife's i got her this for christmas i think last year um she babies this one she doesn't carry it much she's a she's worried that's ebony she's kind of worried about scratching up the ebony wood but I keep telling her that's what it's for. Uh, this one here is in D2, D2, but you can get it in a bunch of different blades, uh, blade uh, steels. The new titanium button lock one is flat ground. Not sure why they did that uh, when all of them are hollow ground. Anyway, this knife, this Elementum, uh, starts at a base of 
43 all the prices i'm putting up are, are the base and you can go up from there because you can get you can get this with damasteel and 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 you can really go expensive with the elementum but at, at base 43 at base for the large uh civivi let's take a look at this one this is a classic it was one of their very first knives one of the first three that they released and and i absolutely love it this is an updated version without the goofy colored liners and it is the praxis big knife at 3.8 inches what is this one two three point seven five three point eight inches wide blade also reminds me of a barong flat ground very thin behind the edge i mean it's thin blade stock to begin with very broad blade very high height grind this may as well be hollow ground it, it's so thin behind the edge you could sharpen this way up and still have thin cutting geometry uh i slept on this one for years and years and then um saw a couple of videos kind of talking about the classic civivis and uh <laughs> classic that's funny uh but civivis from from the very first generation of releases and the praxis kept coming up and i was like i gotta get that knife and saw it in this beautiful wood and had to get it i believe it's rosewood like on the fretboard of a guitar but they use another word uh, another wood called uh that begins with a C that I can never remember. I always go towards the ham. I always call it Kurabuto, like the ham, but it's not. Um, so these two knives can be had for 43 bucks at base. Uh, they're from Civivi. Outstanding builds. Uh, very good heat treats on their steels. And uh, this is a 9CR18 MOV. Awesome, awesome action. Just addictive action. If you like to fidget, these are great. Uh, having my wife's elementum in hand, uh, really, you know, I think I need to get the, or I think I would like to get the button lock version of this, uh, with, without the detent, that is a little annoying, but, uh, it's a button lock. So exclusively how you open and close it, but it's larger. It's got a 3.4 inch blade, uh, rather than this, uh, three inch blade. So I think I might get that at some point. Don't be surprised if you see it here on the channel. All right. So that's 43 bucks. And these are Civivis, a bit of luxury, you know, that you're getting for that first time knife owner um, in a, a luxurious feel for not that much money, 43 bucks. Uh, next up, sort of in the same line, because these were both uh, the same thing. I'm going to do a large and a small option, both at 40 bucks and very robust knives and not without great design. OK, so let's look at this one. This is the Kubi Vagrant. Um, just a premium feeling uh, action here. Uh, incredible uh, detent and really great bearing action on this knife. But like, look at this. It is a uh, three, three and a quarter inch. It's perfect blade shape. And then if you don't like that, you can get the worn cliff, which is just, or the sheep's foot, which just doesn't have this swale here, but has a very similar um cutting edge okay so the kubi vagrant comes in two different blade shapes as i mentioned this is the warren cliff comes in the sheep's foot and it comes in about a million different handle material not materials but colors of g10 and i shouldn't say a million it's it of course is limited but there's a wide variety of these kubis to be had for your taste this is aus 10a blade steel and i don't know much about kubi's heat treating but i do know that this knife works very well so I'm assuming that their heat treat is pretty good because this does not require, this does not dull out easily or quickly. And this, this has been only really used for cardboard and sandwiches. Uh, so yeah, Kubi Vagrant. Now next, uh, this, this was the knife I carried. The only knife I brought with me to Atlanta for blade show because I had to fly and I was worried about TSA stealing my knives. So I brought the Kubi Flash. Now this is a large Kubi. That's that's a 3.8 inch blade again. Very, very nice uh, worn cliffy, bellied worn cliff. Some people call it a reverse tanto, but they're wrong. Uh, you got a you got a large sharpening choil here that you can you can double as a finger choil if need be, uh, but just the same sort of quality. This is D2. Same, really excellent action, cool design, adequate materials, and by adequate I mean. No one thinks G10 is luxurious. No one thinks D2 is luxurious, but it's what you do with those materials. Uh, really excellent ergonomics. Uh, lately, I've been very into neutral, very neutral ergonomics, but 
he's a, this is very comfortable. It positions the blade in a great way. Um, this is a really good knife. has a very good coating on the blade. I've used this for uh, cardboard. Not much, um, but it, it has not really fouled up the coating much that I can see. And 40 bucks. Great knife. Great knife. Um, probably for the first timer, uh, you're going to go for the small one. But if the person is big or has big tasks at hand, this would make an excellent one. Both of these... Uh, have the point down towards uh, the knuckles more, uh, placing the point in line for this kind of utility cut that a lot of people find themselves doing. I think for a first-time user, that might be an important thing. That might be a useful thing because a lot of us do this sort of pull cutting. All right, so that's Kubi. Oh, that was cool, wasn't it? I know. Uh, that's Kubi, and love those. They are a little bit, they feel a little bit more robust than the knives before them, the Civivis. And those Civivis feel a little bit more robust than the knife before them, the Kershaw Leak. But this knife feels a little bit more robust than the Kubis. And I can't have a list like this without talking about Cold Steel. So right here, I have the Cold Steel Voyager. Uh, again, this is, this is one for... Uh, for someone who who has hard use in mind, they have uh, a landscaping company, and they're constantly opening opening up bags of mulch, and they're out there in the in the muck and the mud, and uh, and they're cutting things uh, all day long. This right here would be a, a great option because now they're made in OS 10. This is an older one in OS 8A, but it's got the triad lock. It is a super performer. The triad lock is arguably the strongest lock out there uh who knows things might be changing but very 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 strong back lock due to the fact that it takes all of the um all of the pressure on the back of the blade and puts it into that big thick stop pin and then that transfers into the frame of the handle and not the joint not the connection between the blade and the lock bar so Awesome, awesome knives. Uh, these can be had for 60 bucks. These can be had in different blade shapes, too. There's the um, the Tonto, and you can get the drop point. They used to have this in the Vaquero, which, by the way, I'm getting mine back from my buddy Ian. I gave it to him years ago and came crawling back on bended knee. Can I please have it back? So I'm going to buy it back from him because they don't make those anymore. Uh, but uh, very, very capable rope knife at 60 bucks. And this is the 4-inch. They have the five and a half inch versions, the XLs, uh, also sub 100, except for the drop point. Not sure why. And uh, then they used to do the smaller versions at the three inch blade. But now you have to, uh, I believe now you have to go on um, eBay to find those. Um, they don't make those anymore. But uh, the Voyager, awesome, awesome knife for a first time user because it's not going to break the bank, but it's going to give them years and years and years of use and might inspire them to get, uh, you know, more knives that's that's what all of these are also aimed at doing they're they're inexpensive enough that they're not going to break the bank if you're getting it as a gift to someone you love or like uh but at the same time it'll give them years of use if it's the only knife they ever end up getting or it might inspire them to become a junkie themselves okay last up uh i want to talk about off-grid knives they have so many under 100 bucks that are unbelievably robust and addictive this is they're all best tech made we know how great best tech is they're all with caged bearings they all have amazing blade geometry they're my favorite cardboard cutting knives and i feel like this the enforcer at 60 bucks and then you can go up with different versions but i feel like the enforcer of all of them is most would be the most universally appealing there's the cayman with that really extreme bowie blade that i love but it might be a polarizing design for some people um and there are uh, there's the cleaver which is the best cardboard knife ever but it's weird it looks like a cleaver not not maybe a first-time knife buyer's uh look uh, for a knife but this one um has a non the non-threatening look of a utility knife though those of us in the know <laughs> might look at this and find it very threatening. But something about having the tip down low makes it seem uh, more like a utility knife. And that's something people are more used to. And um, it's also extremely useful to have the point there with that kind of cutting that I'm, I'm saying most of us do uh, a lot of that pull cutting. This one is out of D2. You can get, uh, I'm not sure if it's still around, but they had a 
154 cm version uh with with really cool red streaked g10 uh so i think this is an awesome awesome um option now this is the this is another one that my wife appropriated uh from my collection but i also think this would make a great first time uh knife owner's knife uh gift and that's also the off-grid knives knife <laughs> it is also an off-grid knives knife and it is the uh mini rhino baby rhino so the the big rhino is one of my favorites it's 3.75 inch blade it's a big work knife this is a small version of it and and it is uh a successful shrinking down by a percentage what what do i mean by that sometimes when you make a knife smaller like take the endura when you make the endura into the delica you don't just shrink it down in the shrinkulator machine you got to you got to re reconfigure the choils and make it uh make it make sense in a smaller format for the same size hand well for this knife it just so happened to work that they could just shrink this down because it looks exactly like a small version of the big one. Like none of these proportions have changed, including the thickness. This is exactly as thick as its much, much bigger brother. And that's what makes this a successful micro knife. Uh, this is a three handed knife or th three handed. Got your three hands ready. This is a three fingered knife. My pinky is hanging off the end, but that full thickness at, at 0.6 inches thick <laughs> makes this a very sure in hand knife. This is the recipe. If you're going to make a micro knife and you want it to be able to be used hard, you make it full thickness. Uh, this is a stroke of genius. I love this knife. And plus, it's got addictive, the addictive action of those cage bearings, that best tech build, and one of the best flipper tabs of all times. I love this rounded off fully jimped flipper tab <clears throat> if you're only listening to this imagine a flipper tab that comes up from the spine of the handle with parallel lines and then it has a semicircle on top and the whole thing is jimped anywhere you grab it it's going to actuate perfectly all right so those are those are the knives uh the best uh, gift knives just as an addendum uh here would be two great and inexpensive slip joint style knives non non-locking knives you might want to get like the case any other cv knives uh, that's the chrome vanadium they do a great job with those uh this kudu is a non-locking knife 15 bucks very capable even though 5cr uh steel and then fixed blade knives uh the sr the survival rescue the srk from cold steel makes an excellent one fixed blade for a first timer because it can be used survival self-defense all sorts of things same thing goes for the off-grid grizzly it can be used as a woods knife can be used as a kitchen knife great camp knife just a great uh one knife gift for a first time user oh you're going camping i got a great knife for you boom they have it they have it the rest of their lives or it starts something and they become knife junkies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining me on this journey, this journey through new knifedom. Uh, I, I use the word noob a number of times. I, I don't approve of that. I'm going to I'm going to cut that uh, from my vocabulary. I just want you all to know that since I made it public, it's got to be 10 best folders. Let me know what you think are the 10 best folders that you could give to someone or you don't have to give me 10, but. But list, uh, tell me what you think is a good first knife. I, I would have to say probably of all of them, that QSP Penguin is what we're going to hear most of. Okay, join us on Sunday for episode 340 of the Knife Junkie podcast when I talk with my good friend Dave Everett, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. We go through his uh, the new knives in his collection. We talk philosophy. We get deep. He's a brilliant guy and a, a wonderful practitioner of the Filipino martial arts as, as, as well as like curator of a museum of knives. Uh, in his own basement. All right. Thanks for joining me on the Knife Junkie podcast. Thanks to Jim for working his magic. And be sure to uh, check us out on Patreon where you get a lot more. All right. Again, for Jim working his magic, I'm Bob saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.